Today I'm going to demonstrate how I make my signature swirl sterling silver signature swirl torque collar. This one is the long version and uh, as you can hear my cat is in the background he's going to help narrate. Um, so I start with 14 gauge sterling silver wire and I use um, a bust, mannequin bust, to get the basic uh, shape, which I have memorized in my head. I didn't write it down, but anyway. Uh, so then I form the basic layout to make sure I have it. That's Tip, that's my cat, my three-legged cat named Tip. <laughs> anyway. Yes, but you can't help. You're not a jeweler. I'm sorry, you're not a jeweler. You're a cat. Okay, so what I wanna do, now that I have this laid out, I wanna solder my base so that it stays in place while I wire wrap it. But these all have like special curves, so what I'm gonna do is take a magic marker while I have it laid out right, and I'm gonna just mark across like this so I have spots to line up when I'm ready to solder. That way I can take this all apart piece by piece, file it so that I have two nice, clean, well fit together surfaces to solder without having to drive myself crazy for hours on end. This is sort of the, here's where you're going to shape and file and then solder. It's just a guideline. It makes things like shorter in the long run, so supposedly. So, and because it's a kind of a free-flowing design, it doesn't have to be super, super, super perfect because you can always like bend and modify and still make it gorgeous. But this helps. So those are where my main solder connections are going to be. Uh, so now I have it marked. Now I can take this apart and file each piece and then set it up for one single solder operation with my pick. So that's that. Okay, so now I got my necklace marked and so now what I'm going to do is take my handy dandy files and just make a nice clean cut join just wash my hands too so you know nice and work clean saves you having to clean later so what I'm going to do is just make a nice flat area with my file for that solder join so that piece will fit right up next to there and at this point it's not work hardened so I can pull it apart to make life easier while I'm working I'm just gonna same thing nice and flat Nice clean join. I know someone's going to ask me what cut is this. I have no idea. Oh, actually, that's not true. Wait. Okay. I don't know. What is this? Whatever that is. That's what they are. Yeah, see? And this is a uh, 
it's okay. It, I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, it's uh, cut, got cuts on all four sides. It's flat. So I think it's an equaling, but I'm not sure because of the point, but that's, that's what happens when you're self-taught. You're not quite sure, but you know, it works. So, hey, cause you know, this is about enjoyment, not about uh, trying to be the 51 year old, I've been to jewelry school person. No, this is the hobby person who's turned into a professional. <laughs> okay. I just know they work. I started out with these. You know, you can get them at your uh, bulk merchandise store, you know, where you can get the groceries. You know the one. I got these. Uh, they're great for about two weeks and then, you know, but I used them for two years. Recently, I bought these and another set. Oh my God, so much better, so much better. Tools matter. Okay, so there's the, that cut. And what I'm trying to do is from here to here where they join, make it nice and flat because I'm gonna flatten them all out, lay them together and then solder. So I want the area where they touch to be nice and flat so, because solder will not fill a gap. So fit is everything. Clean, fit, flux. Flux is down the road. Okay, so there's that one. Now I'm gonna take my other pieces and do the same thing. Okay, so now we're getting ready to solder. And so this is uh, quite time consuming in a way, but uh, very, 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 very necessary part of our process. So I have all my pieces filed. These are all my little, you know, prop up things. Okay, so tweezers. So first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of like lay it out so that my solder spots are all over my charcoal block. And I love this big giant round charcoal block, uh, which I got at Rio Grande, shameless plug. Uh, because for bigger pieces like this, it's just fantabulous. Um, you can lay it all out and do one solder operation. And I really, really like that. So I'm trying very hard not to touch my pieces because I have them nice and, you know, filed clean and, uh, fit. Theoretically fit together. Uh, so I don't want to get any oils from my hand on that because it can uh, ruin your solder join. So now is the semi tedious process of lining the pieces up so those spots that I filed line up together. That one does not, it's going to need some work. Note to self. Might be better to color code these suckers. You know, like join this color, this join a different color, and this join a different color, because like by the time I hooked up my fantabulous camera contraption, hello. Uh, now I don't remember which piece goes where, but hey, you know, that happens. It cannot be right. Yep, that's better. That's better. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No wonder. 
figured that one wasn't fitting right. Okay, fine. Okay, got a problem here, as you can see. Sorry. Nose, sniffy nose. I do not have a cold. I have this thing, you know, um, you know how when you were a little kid, you always saw grandmas with their sweaters, you know, and they had their, they always had a Kleenex, you know, stuffed up their sleeve, you know, they would pull it out and wipe you and whatever. Okay, now I know why, because as soon as I turned 51, every day my nose began to run, drip. Don't ask me why, maybe I'm leaking brain fluid, I don't know, but I always have to have a Kleenex close by. Good God. Getting old is not for sissies. All right, back to business. Here we go. I originally put a line here and here and here. Uh, and the way the design works is that the final product is wire wrapped. So all my solder joints are going to be covered with uh, wire wrapping. So even though I marked here all three pieces for here, three pieces for here, uh, four pieces for here, I only need uh, one solder join here. I don't have to solder this piece to this piece at this spot because it'll be secured here and then it'll be wire wrapped. So what I, the one I really need though is this one. So I don't care that this one doesn't line up because it's gonna be connected here and my wire wrapping will, will cover this. So, um, but this one is not, it's not really where I want it. So I'm gonna think about that in a second. First of all though, I'm going to because it doesn't have to be joined here, I'm going to make this work and then flare this out so I can get these because my hope is, and uh, I've done it before so I know it can happen, do this all in one big fat solder operation. So, you know, one big time firing time, not have to pickle and redo. Uh, but it does take just a tiny bit of time and skill and, you know, patience. Oh my God, patience. So, that is not, all right, I'm showing you this, keep in mind, I am self-taught, and uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. I have these half round pliers, they're half round on one side, I hope you can see that, and they're flat on the other. I find these invaluable for moments like this because what I can do is my wire is dead soft and I can use the flat side on the outside and the half round side on the inside give it a good squeeze and voila it now fits better. Oh, well, what do you know? Ooh. So you see this is kind of a whack-a-mole operation because, and it might, in the long run, it, it might, time-wise, it might be faster, I guess, to solder this part, then solder the next part, then solder the next part, because I take so much time setting this up. I might be, I don't know, I never timed it, but this is how my brain works. I have to do it all at once. That's the challenge. That's who I am. And this is the part where you're like, damn, I didn't see those laying there. It's going to mess up those. Yeah, right. Okay, fine. My ADD brain at work. Okay, so, by the way, I could not function without tweezers. God, are tweezers the greatest invention or what? Nobody tells you this, but when you turn 50 or, you know, around there, your fingers do not work the same as when you were 30. You know, you'd see grandma or your great aunt or somebody like fumbling 
you know, to tie a ribbon or a shoe or whatever, and you think, well, ugh. okay, well, note to self, your fingers won't work well someday either. So be patient, be kind. Ta-da, ta-da. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So maybe I start at the bottom. Oh my god. Oh. One more. Oop, just touched it. Mm. Eh. Cross our fingers. Okay, now you're gonna like uh, be, oh, now what? Okay, now I know it fits. That's what that's all about. I know it fits. I know that it works, okay? So now I have to lay my solder flux, which means it's gonna move it out of place, and that's kind of sad, but I know that it fits, so when I go back to do it, I know all I have to do is line it up. I've fixed my fit, now I'm going to flux uh, and lay my solder. So I'm going to use medium solder and my solder is kind of a little wee tiny bit dirty. I could put it in the pickle, but I don't know. I like doing it this way. I take a piece of 400 sandpaper and, uh, you know, not over my piece, but over, you know, back here. I run the sandpaper over it to get the tarnish off of it um, so that because it just you know you can't have that it has to be without oxidation for it to flow nice I use medium wire solder for just about everything from uh, Rio Grande I order all my supplies from Rio Grande they have the best prices I have searched diligently for other places uh, but Rio if you especially if you buy uh, bulk you know, larger amounts, it's cheaper. It's always been cheaper. So, and then I can pass that on to my customers, which they like and I like, and, you know, keeps things rolling. All right, so now my solder is cleaned. I wiped it with a microfiber cloth. So now I know it has no oils on it and it has no uh, sandpaper residue. Okay, so I'm going to cut about, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 millimeters wide. And yes, I just touched it, but you know what? My hands are clean and I'm going to, I can't tell you how many times a day I do that. All right, so I am, yeah, where's the clean side? Okay, um, so 10 or 12 millimeters, about half an inch. One, two, three major solder joints. So I need three pieces about that size. Why, you ask? That's a lot of solder. Okay, for two reasons. One, 
I'm going to, I have this on my charcoal block, which is great because it, you know, reflects the heat back up and it is a reducing atmosphere, which means that it uh, doesn't uh, produce oxidation as much, but I don't have any airflow to speak of here. So it, it, the solder does not like to flow unless there's a little better airflow there should be some lift so that it, the air can circulate around it and, it and it works better. Technical jewelry gesture there. Okay, <laughs> but I have found that the smartest thing I can do in this situation is to lay the solder underneath. It gives it the airflow until the solder runs and then it goes whoosh and it'll run the solder will come up between there. It's a beautiful solder join and then anything that, you know, you can file off anything's left over. The beauty of this design, you, you have to clean up just because, you know, you have to, but you don't have to clean up as much because this is all going to be covered with wire wrapping. So you clean it and you get it, you polish it, but you don't have to worry about the fact that maybe your solder shows a little bit or you got a little excess on the what because it's going to be covered with wire wrapping. Beautiful. So I'm going to flux my wire. Ooh, I just made my flux thinner and it's really pasty. Um, so now you're going to be, oh no, you got to move it. Yeah, but I know they fit. So I'm just going to lift this up like this. Slide that under there. Now, sometimes does it not fit because of the, yeah, mm -hmm, it happens. But here's the good news. You know it fits. You know it fits tight, right? So there you have it. And now I'll place all my solder and then I'll go back and flux the top of my piece. Now, there's a lot of flux on this. So I know that the part that's touching the metal below is fluxed. Now, that has kind of a natural space under it. So um, I could have made that smaller because that second piece is not going to be connected to it. So I'm going to run my solder, lift that up like that. And the nice thing about the flux too is it kind of makes it sticky so your pieces kind of want to stay together a little better. So I've got a good join there, got my solder place, got a good join. Grr, come on. Make sure it's perfect. Solder does not fill gaps. Okay, okay, okay. I can do it. Yeah, place the other solder and then go back and fix. Yes, yes, yes. That was smart. Talking to yourself can be very helpful. Although some people may think make you think you're crazy, but I am crazy, so I don't care. All right. Now, solder's under. I know everything fits, so now I'm just going to go back and actually I should flux because it's going to move when you flux it, theoretically. So, yeah, I use a lot of flux. I am of the opinion that you can never have too much flux. Uh, it protects from fire stain and fire scale, and it makes your solder flow. Here's the tricky part about doing it on a charcoal block though. You want to make sure that you don't get any bits of whatever's on your charcoal block on your work. Put a little solder right in there. So you just want to keep your solder you know, a plastic handle or wood handle with no metal so it's non-contaminating. Real! And I could solder absolutely everything, but I'm really going to focus on the areas where the flame is going to be concentrated. I'm going to heat the whole piece, obviously. Okay, not that, but... But, uh... I'm just going to make sure my flux doesn't touch the charcoal block. 
as much as possible because you get little bits and they stay on there and they have to file them off. It's just pain. Pain. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and fix my fit. And at that point, all you should have to do, because you've already checked your fit, is touch your pieces together because you already fit them. Grr. Okay, one last. Ta. Da. Ladies and gentlemen, we have launch. All right, now. Putting everything out of my way except soldering. Okay, so. Now I am going to, this is my torch. This is what I've used forever and ever. I'm working my way up to a better torch system that is, uh, but I have no formal training and the whole oxygen tank that could explode and really, really hot fire still scares me a little. So I know what I'm doing with this. So this is what I do. Granted, it does keep me from doing some things that are like really detail-y, but uh, you know, I'm not probably ready for that anyway. So here's what I'm doing, self-ignition. I'm just going to heat the whole area, get everything warmed up. The flux will turn white and crusty. And I'm just going to work this bit. You want the blue tip of the flame? See the blue tip of the flame? Right there, right about there. That's the hottest part. So that's the part you want to put at your solder joint. And just make a circle round and round and round she goes. And you just keep it on there. You'll see the flux turn glassy. Oh look, there's my solder going into the joint. Woo! Okay, next one. Should be close. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. Now, am I happy about that? No, not really, but I can either cut it, file it off, or uh, I can wrap around it. it just, I'll have to look at that. Uh, but I'm probably going to cut it and file it. That's, but there you go. Um, I was busy talking and did not take my piece up. Flux makes it kind of stick to the charcoal block, so you just kind of reheat it and it'll lift. Ta da! There you go. Okay, so I'm going to quench, and you can't see my quench pot because it's just a big Tupperware thing. I don't have running water in my shop. And then I'm going to drop it in the pickle, and then I'll show you what I do from there. <laughs> 